Hi, everybody, and welcome to the We Volunteer Now um, Youth Board panel. Today, we have um, five, six different panelists who are going to talk about some of their volunteering and why volunteering is important to them. Um, I'm Elizabeth Johnson, as you all know, this is part of the We 365 Youth Voices program. Um, and this week, we have a panel discussion. Obviously, we're going to hear from multiple different students um, who I'm going to allow themselves to answer. Um, or to introduce themselves now. Um, and we'll go ahead and start with Fernanda. Fernanda, do you want to introduce yourself? Yeah, thank you. Um, so my name is Fernanda Scharfenberger. I use she, her pronouns. I'm a recently graduated senior from Prize in Louisville. Um, I'm going to be attending Center of College in the fall and studying sociology. And the issue I'm most uh, passionate about is climate justice. Awesome, thank you so much, Fernanda. And then um, next we'll go to Ellie. Hi, my name is Ellie Hummel. I use she, her pronouns. Um, I recently graduated from Manuel High School in Louisville and I'm going to the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill next year studying global studies and biochemistry. Awesome, congrats and, on, oh, oh, sorry, go ahead. The issue I'm most pas passionate about is healthcare access. Awesome, congratulations on graduating. Um, it's a big, big thing. I'm graduating this year too. Elizabeth, I think you muted yourself. <laughs> um, so I heard you say my name, so I'll say I'm, I'm Forrest. I'm a student at the University of Louisville. Um, I'm gonna be a sophomore this upcoming year, as long as we have school and I'm really concerned with youth civic engagement in general. As far as a specific policy issue, I'd say climate change is going to be the most pressing issue of our generation and of our posterity. So that's at the top. For sure. I'm sorry about muting. My Zoom completely shut me out for a second. Um, just technical issues, so much fun. Um, next, we'll go on to Megan, who's also um, has been graduated for a while. So you can go ahead. That's such a weird thing to say out loud. Um, hi, my name's Megan. Um, I just finished my sophomore year at the University of Kentucky. I'm a pre-med student, um, so I guess I'm currently a junior now, which is like gross. Um, in terms of a, I get justice issue that I care the most about, I'm also really passionate about access to healthcare, and I use she, her pronouns. Awesome. Thank you, Megan. Um, next, we're going to go to Esther. I think you're muted, Esther. I'm sorry. <laughs> so yeah, my name is Esther Sadiki, um, and um, I'm a graduate like at Iroquois High School class of 2020. Uh, I'm joining University of Louvo um, this coming fall if there is school, and I'm going for a double major in criminal justice and international relations. And I'm passionate about immigration, and I use she and her pronouns. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you so much, Esther. Um, and then lastly, I think we'll go to Bailey. Bailey, go ahead. Hi, uh, I'm Bailey Reed. I'm going to be a junior at South Oldham High School this year. I use she, her pronouns, and an issue I'm most passionate about is racial equality. Awesome. Okay, and with that, I think everybody's introduced themselves, and um, we'll go ahead and start. Um, Ellie, Hummel, and Fernanda are going to be kind of our hosts for this program, and they're going to be asking the questions. Um, I'm just here to, to introduce and everything. Um, so you guys can go ahead and take it away. Alrighty, um, so our first question is, what role does volunteerism play in your life? Um, and we'll get started with Forrest. Um, for me, volunteerism and advocacy are important. It's a sense of fulfillment. Um, I think uh, a lot of society pushes folks to, to go towards stuff that's more prestigious or more about money. Um, and while that might be the thing folks tend to go towards, I don't believe that's actually the thing that makes us happy or healthy people. And I don't believe it's the thing that contributes most to society either. I think helping people, however that might be, be even if it's just being kind is the best way to do that. And that's what makes me happy. So. All right, now we'll hear from Esther. 
Um, yes, um, volunteering like plays a very big role in my life because um, I believe in that a hand that I gives is always above the hand that receives. So when I'm volunteering, when I'm giving back, when I'm doing a service for free without expecting any benefit in return, I feel more accomplished. I really feel happy and I feel like, you know, I've done something that I, I don't expect anything back in return. I'm helping somebody and when it makes like the people I'm serving or, you know, um, happy, I really feel more accomplished in my heart. Thank you. And finally, we'll hear from Fernanda. I'm actually going to launch into the next question. Um, so next question is, how has your advocacy evolved as you've moved through middle and high school? And we're going to kick it to Megan to start us off. Okay, hey. Um, I think in terms of like charting a course of what advocacy has looked like, I think when like kind of maybe starting in like middle school to high school to now, I guess halfway through college, which is like, I, I keep saying that a lot and that's just like, it's so like I haven't had to do that for so long and it's like, this is literally like repulsive. Um, but like, edging closer to adulthood. But I think in terms of like what it looks like, I think like the biggest thing that We Days taught me is that like your youth is not a deterrent to advocacy in any way, right? Like regardless of your age, you're able to accomplish so much and get involved in these areas. Um, that being said, I think by nature of, I guess like getting more mature hopefully or older I think like I've been able to understand like what issues when I think about like my adulthood and like my career like what I want to be a part of consistently and I think also just understanding like the minutia of it I think when I was younger I was like I believe everyone should have health care and that's it and like and while that obviously like still holds true it's like very specific policies that like affect how people live. And it's like these kind of details that I didn't understand how deeply they affected like the day to day lives of Louisvillians or Kentuckians or United States citizens or whatever scale you're talking about. I think overall when I like chart that advocacy path, it's more and more like an increasing of understanding of like what it really looks like for people. So, I mean, I think I've always been passionate about it. I know all of you have always been passionate about it, but I think as you keep going through like school and when you're eventually done with school, it's just more and more about meeting more people, understanding more experiences and understanding, I guess, how that shapes like where you are with advocacy itself. Definitely, yeah. Um, I'm gonna pass it to Bailey. So I'm in high school now, but in middle school, uh, my teachers always did a really good job of teaching us to like reach for our goals and for things that we wanted to advocate for and presenting this to other people. But I feel as I moved into high school that there were more groups of people and more opportunities I could reach out for. Um, normally because when you're more mature, there's more things that you can accomplish. Like people tend to want people who are older. Um, so that has been a part of the struggle, but also it's part of the benefit of now being a high school student. Um, and I think that as you go into high school, people can hold more educated conversations about things they want to see done in the world. And that's really helpful when it comes to advocacy. Cool. Um, Ellie, would you like to answer this question? I would love to. Um, I think to me, um, advocacy when you're in middle, middle school um, has a very like strict definition. Like advocacy can only be going to this rally or doing this active service. But especially going through four years of high school, um, you really learn that advocacy is anything that you want it to be. Um, it's doing research at a lab and presenting your paper about um, the inequities within the electoral system. It's so many different things. And really, you need to use your talents to advocate for what you ultimately care about. Don't let other people tell you what you care about because at the end of the day, your advocacy is most genuine when it comes from what you believe in and how you and like how you choose to express it. And with that, our next question is, what role has We Day played in your community involvement and what is a favorite memory you have through We Day? And we're gonna get started with Bailey. So We Day has taught me to try and take every opportunity that I can to advocate and to make change. I find myself like, helping with just like the little things that you wouldn't think would matter, but then over time, like those build up and that creates like a network of people for you to be with who also want to make change. And my favorite memory from We Day probably would have to be the compassion walk when we're all walking through Louisville. And it's just so cool to see everyone like looking out their windows or on the sidewalk, like on the street, like looking at us and cheering us on because it gives you this sense of hope 
that people believe in the greater good of other people and that they're willing to make change and they want to make the world a better place. Um, next up, we'll have Esther. Oh, yes. Um, we Day has really like um, played a very uh, big role in my uh, community involvement. First of all, because I'm not from here. I'm not from the States and I've only been here for a year. So I really didn't know how to get involved here, around here. Maybe I knew a different system from back home. So um, it really like helped me to know how things work here, to uh, introduce me to different opportunities, to show me this is how we do things here. So it was really like um, a very precious one year of service because um, I, I got different opportunities to feel happy and fulfilled. And then I got like to meet different people through We Day and it has really played a very big role in my community involvement. And I really appreciate that. Thank you. Um, and finally, we'll have Megan. Um, so for me, I think, you know, it's admittedly been some time since I've been, you know, in the We Day program, but I think the biggest thing that it's taught me is kind of the sense of community that I kind of got from it in terms of, you know, I was chair of my, like, give it a board. That being said, like, I think anyone who's able to experience it in some way meets so many people in these different areas of advocacy. Um, and I think I consistently have that kind of like, what did I get from We Day moment in terms of seeing what my friends who are involved in climate justice or racial justice or all these different areas areas are involved with. Um, and I think it's like that overwhelming, we all talked about hope here. And I think when we look at these issues, they feel kind of insurmountable. And there's 100 different kind of news items that we get. There's like, oh, um, you know, polar ice caps melting and people are being killed for no reason and all these difficult things we see every day. And I think it's they feel these difficult things that have no solution. But I'm able to look at kind of the people I've met through this program and see the work they're doing in our mind myself that, you know, a solution can be at hand because of people like them. So I think that in terms of what I really learned from it and what my favorite memory of it is, it's what I consistently get to see every day because of the people I met through it. Wow, um, I love hearing about how like much of an impact We Day has made on all of us. Um, so I'm gonna bring it to the next question, which is what difficulties or challenges have you encountered through the community work that you were involved in? Um, so we're gonna start with Esther. Um, I've been involved in uh, like in different um, community projects so like first of all um, the cultural adjustment personally yeah I can repeat again I'm not from here so like meeting new people with uh, different cultures with different beliefs and then matching them with my own culture my own beliefs so it's really like it has been something hard for me to get through um, all this uh, year that I've been with We Day, but then in the end of it all, it's a welcoming team. I felt at home and I managed to match my, my beliefs and my culture with theirs. And then the other challenge is uh, for some people, like uh, for some people, for some folks, like um, getting to places of like, um, to sites where we're supposed to volunteer from like, uh, some of us like like rides at some point like you like i'm really willing to go to this place and volunteer do this volunteering activity but then who will take me maybe you don't have a car maybe nobody to take you there these are some of the challenges we face and in some like project that i've been able to do a uh, language barrier to there's a project that i had to work with people that don't barely speak english and barely speak my own language so finding interpreters was something hard. So I had to use sign language at some point to communicate to them. So it was really hard. And at some point, like a uh, conflict of generation, all the people from different cultures matching your, like your age with their age. So, you know, it was really something hard for me to go through, but we finally managed to go through it. So those are some of the challenges that um, I faced. Uh, through the projects throughout the year. Great, thanks for sharing that. Um, and now Forrest. Um, for a lot of youth volunteering, um, there's a, a balance to, to, to strike because the implicit mission of programs like We Day um, and 
I know a lot of folks are involved with the Kentucky YMCA Youth Association, is youth development. It's youth character development. It's, it's helping them grow as people in all sorts of numerous ways. Volunteering is wonderful for that. But from an organizing standpoint, as we're putting together these projects for students, we have to make sure that we never lose sight of making sure the service is effective as possible and actually serves the needs of the folks who are being served. Um, that's the balance from the youth standpoint. I, I, I have seen some projects that don't actually effectively serve the communities they're supposed to be serving. So, I mean, sure, it's great for the kids involved, but it's not really supposed to be about them. It's supposed to be about planting the seed for them to be able to serve for the rest of their life. Um, so some trade-off I mean, is possible, but we just can't lose sight of either one when you're doing it for youth. Great, thanks. Um, and then Megan. I would say that like, I think for me, it's really similar what Forrest was talking about. I think when it comes to like what kind of service you want to be a part of and what's going to, you know, amount to the best amount of good for a community. I think the struggle that I see a lot is wanting to help in something, but not understanding it. Like I've had like very fully formed opinions since I was like, what, like 10. And, but admittedly, a lot of it was like not shaped by people I knew or by experience that I knew people had, but rather like what I perceived to be their experience. So I think when it comes to caring about an issue, I think, not listening is a pitfall that a lot of people have mainly because you know we all want to do good we all want to be a part of something good but i think we all do better to learn from those who are actually experiencing it and not being like i know what you're feeling i know how sucky it is i'm gonna fix it like you have to listen and comprehend what people go through in order to really be a real change and support um so overall when it comes to a difficulty and advocacy and organizing i think it's showing people that like what this issue is is not something to be afraid of, but rather people you can learn from, people you can help in some way, but based on what they need, not just based on like, oh, I know you need more books. Like you, like, do they actually, like, what do they actually need and understand a real community need? Thank you all for sharing about kind of the struggles you faced. I think we can all agree that our struggles make us better servant leaders and better advocates for our communities. Um, and obviously they also shape our values. Um, and so how have uh, the values you've learned through service followed you to college for Megan and Forrest. Um, we'll start with Forrest. Um, well, I mean, if I'm honest, I wouldn't know who I would be now if it weren't for service programs over the past seven, eight years. I mean, I have no idea. Every Most of the folks that I know and care about, I've met through these programs and, and all of the mentors that I've had in my life served in one way or another. So the programs have made me who I am. As far as how it's changed over the years, um, as Megan was talking about earlier, it's now I actually understand more of the problems behind what's going on and the levers of power behind making change besides just pointing and saying, let's work on that. It's saying, okay, here's the best way to go about that. And, and here's how we can really make that change. Thank you so much for that answer for us. Now let's hear from Megan. Yeah, I think um, I, same thing for me. I think in terms of like the numerous ways that We Day and these other youth work is really like impacted my life are, you know, too many to put into words. But I think in terms of like the definitive impact, like, I didn't think I understood as much of it until I entered into college. And I kind of, I guess on the cusp of adulthood, we talk about that. Like when you're into these spaces more and less of like a high school student and more as like, you know, an actual voting citizen, um, it's different. I think when I was in high school, I was like, oh, I'm gonna go hang out with Wendy and I'm gonna go do this. And, I'm gonna, and, and that's obviously fun and I got a lot out of it. But I think um, in terms of like directed values I got from it, I think I just understood that like everybody has different experiences. Everybody has different, you know, ideas of what advocacy ought to look like. But in terms of where my own impact is gonna be best and when it comes to supporting community and not just what I think is the best kind of idea to work with um, but in terms of you know what 
is the greater need and where I can be of service rather than just like what's going to be the cool thing like oh I love picking up trash like where am I like where is it gonna you know matter and where am I gonna matter and where can I be of you know true service and finding that calling in your own life is something that we day has shown me to be you know kind of a pushing force consistently great thanks y'all um so obviously we're living in a really unprecedented time um, with the spread and prevalence of COVID-19. And so one question we have for y'all is, how have you adapted your advocacy to meet the challenges that COVID-19 presents? Um, and I'm gonna pass it to Bailey to start us off. So I know that personally, I've been on like so many Zoom calls and FaceTime calls with people and um, texting people, just so you can figure out like, how you can best serve your community during the times where you can't necessarily go out and see everyone. Um, you know, and it's just trying to connect with people and to see how they're doing um, obviously makes a really big difference. So I think that's really important. Great. Um, I think, yeah, I, I can share in the sense that I've been on so many Zoom calls and I've never had this much screen time, I don't think, um, for advocacy work. Um, I think another thing, like through the different organizations I'm a part of, we've been, including We Day, um, on our meetings, we've been really trying to lean into, like, what is it that the community, like, needs in this moment? And, like, maybe it's not our exact niche. Um, so, for example, like, I'm most passionate about climate justice. Um, but with, like, the rise in violence within our country, we realize, like, what can we do to, like, spread awareness um, and also, like, look at our own privilege and how we can be showing up for these communities. Um, so being able to like hop on calls and really like have deep conversations about these things and then plan things that we can do like digitally um, to, to show up for other folks um, who may aren't, maybe not aren't in like in our organization. Um, and I'd love to hear from Ellie as well on this question. Um, so I think right before um, the quarantine began, um, I was getting involved in so many organizations. I was teaching math classes. I was volunteering at a nursing home. I was doing all these things in person. Um, and then the quarantine began. And what you have to remember is that all the issues that were out there before, they're still out there. And a lot of them are heightened because of the circumstances. And so um, I found some digital ways, like I've recorded um, lessons on probability and magic um, for kids to watch. Um, and just like really gotten onto those Zoom calls <laughs> and found ways to adjust situations where you'd be there in person um, to still meet the needs of the community um, just virtually. Um, can I add something there? Go for it, Forrest. Um, I remembered something. I at the beginning of quarantine in March, I, I helped out with a service project called the Metro March for Meals here in Louisville. And, um, it was interesting to see, because this was at the, it, at the beginning of it. It went on for a month, and every day we would distribute thousands of meals to folks in cars. It, it blew my mind. I'd never seen anything like it. There, every day you'd show up to the site, and there would be parking lots full of senior citizens waiting to get their meals for the week. And it... It took me aback to see this. I mean, these weren't the folks that you anticipated having this sort of need, and I hadn't seen need like this on that scale. Um, and once that we got to the end of the month, the program was shut down, A, because of funding, and B, because we didn't know how to continue it safely. So that need still exists. That need is on a much larger scale than it was back then, I'm sure. And volunteers, have a hard time safely going about distributing those meals. And a lot of volunteers, folks from privilege, might not be seeing the same things that folks that are needing food during this crisis now, newly unemployed, are facing. So I don't know what the answer is there, except that I'm sure some folks are still out there doing that work and that have found safe ways to do it. And I'm sure they could use more help and just aren't getting the attention that they need. For sure. Um, and I just wanted to say, add a little bit in, um, as we're kind of coming to a close of the panel, um, it's, it's very hard in this time of need, in this pandemic, um, because we're all very focused on our own problems that we 
may not usually have like obviously everybody has more problems now than they had before um and it's it's really hard to keep focus that um like volunteerism and how passionate you are about the problems that other people have and helping to solve those problems like giving people meals and things like that and it's very it's very hard to stay centered in that um when you have increasing problems of your own so i just wanted to kind of take a moment to ask everybody who's watching this, going to be watching this on this panel to just kind of recenter yourself and think about um, everything that you have and also how you can help others during this time safely, stay safe, wear masks, um, stay six feet apart, everything like that. Um, but to close out this panel, I'd like to ask one question of everybody. Um, and the question is, what's your message for students and adults who are looking to get involved in advocacy um, in their communities, specifically students where it's harder to get involved in volunteering and advocacy um, and working for volunteer organizations when you are younger. Um, and we can start off with Forrest. I think you're muted, Forrest. Thank you. Um, for young folks, just don't let anything hold you back. Um, you can look and see so many young folks that haven't let anything hold them back and then are changing the world in all sorts of ways. If you want your community to know something, make something go viral on social media or write an op-ed about it or organize a demonstration or just get people together and go fix it. For adults out there and for everyone, just be kind. It's that simple. For sure, very true, Forrest. Um, Megan, what's your, your message to everybody? Um, I think it's just in general to not be dissuaded by um, a feeling of like, not like I guess stagnancy is the best word. Like sometimes it feels like you're doing all this work and there's never gonna be any change and you're not gonna change any minds. And um, especially in polarized times, I think it feels like one group of people have one opinion about it and one group of people have another opinion about it. And if you're on one camp, then, you know, another camp is never going to see eye to eye with you and there's never any room, you know, for an understanding. And I think, especially with me, like I got very dissuaded by that all the time with issues I cared about. Um, but I think the biggest thing I've learned, you know, c continually like after we day as well as while being in the program is that, you know, there's always gray area. There's no such thing as one definitive yes and one definitive no. Most people exist in that area. Um, not everyone's, you know, as crazy about advocacy as this group of us are. Um, and so I think like the biggest advice that I have is like don't get really is in just in truth and just information. So overall, I think my biggest piece of advice is don't, you know, get scared of these big insurmountable problems. Just do the work that you're doing and, you know, keep being a part of that grassroots stuff. For sure. And that's very important. It's very hard to. Let's hear from Bailey and then we'll come back to Esther once her tech problem's fixed. Um, so I would just say to everyone in general, take every opportunity that you can to volunteer and to get to learn about things because you'll sometimes find that you're more passionate about issues that you didn't even know um, could be something that you were interested in. You just find all these new outlets and groups of people that you can talk to. And then I would say surround yourself with people who are kind and who want to make change because those are going to be the people who are going to back you up and they're going to help you find new ways to volunteer and to serve your community. And they're going to be those people who help uplift you and can share ideas. And I just think that's really beneficial for advocacy. Now let's hear from Esther. Okay. So. My piece of advice will be um, folks to be pa patient because uh, they'll face different challenges down the road uh, through volunteering, but then all they need to be is patient. And then they need to be humble too because some people will, be, will have different attitude towards them, but when you're serving people, of course, you need to humble yourself and let's leave our pride back home and everything. Let's go out there and be humble to people that will be serving and all in all uh let don't let anything pull you back pull you down to serve or to do anything that makes you happy because some people like um in my journey of volunteering i met some people who've discouraged me but then that you can't do this you can't do that but um i always encourage myself so let them 
be encouraged always contact with yourself so you need to encourage yourself before other people encourage you and uh, my last message would be like volunteering is the only thing that never requires expense because people are always ready willing to teach you and uh, when you learn all these experiences that will help even like uh, in your cv like when you're applying for your new job and everything so this is the only place that you get to show your skills and you get to learn new things everybody will be willing to teach you so you can volunteer and then in the long run you'll use all this experience even when applying for a job when you need one so thank you thank you esther that was that really resonated with me i think um, so now let's hear from Fernanda. So I think my message to young people um, is to not be afraid to be uncomfortable, and to not be afraid to, to try new things. Um, I think we all grow when we get out of our comfort zone, and that's when we're really able to make change um, in an effective way. And I think for adults, I would say to do more, um, then simply acknowledge how inspiring other folks are, um, like young people in particular. I think adults have so much experience and ability to support young people who are just starting off, um, getting involved and wanting to create change. And, and they wanna hear the stories and um, the lessons that older folks have to share. So I would say like, be willing to share those. Um, and I think just overall that, this world needs more vision and hope um, and that that can really happen when, when folks step up and challenge themselves. So I think that's my message. Yeah, I think especially when you let that overwhelming sense of this is terrible and it's never ever going to get better consume you then you just become so cut off from the issues. And I mean, as someone who watches the news every night, um, I make sure that I feel the stories that like happen, you know? Because if a terrible thing happens and you just sit there and you watch it and you don't like feel something about the story on the news, that's a sign that you're letting yourself turn away from the challenges that are still out there, but you're also letting yourself turn away from the hope that's still out there. And you always have an ability to make change. And don't think about it on this like huge scale of like people like Malala and Greta who go out there and are these big figureheads. You don't have to be a big figurehead like them to get something done in your community. Um, because I guarantee you if that problem's happening um, on national news, then it's happening in your community too. Um, and so just be proactive about what you do and do it because you truly care. Um, and you want to see that community be better and you want to see your community grow too. Thank you so much and I'm sorry that there were technical difficulties. <laughs>